Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial. I'm Kawazi and today we're having a look at shaders. Now believe it or not, these four sprites that you see on the screen are all actually the same color. They're all built off the same green crab sprite. That's just a simple four frame animation. What I've done is I've used a shader to pick out those four colors and recolor the sprite. Before we go too much further, I just want to make a shout out to the artist Sunith that helped produce these. We were actually doing it as part of the Melbourne Game Jam. Um, and I've got a link to her portfolio and some of the other cool work that she's done down in the uh, description section below. So go check that out, then come back and we'll show you how we made this shader. So first we're going to set up a scene. We've got a simple animated sprite here and we've got a camera. Nothing too fancy there. If we take a look closely at the sprite, you'll see this one is pixel art. So it's made up of four distinct colors. So there's a transparent background, there's the light green of the shell, there's a couple of darker greens under there, and then there's the it's very dark green, almost black, of the eyes. To make this work, we also have to change the sprite input settings to point instead of bilinear. The next thing we're going to do is go into the package manager. Uh, make sure you have show preview packages on because currently shader graph is in preview. And there's a couple packages that you're going to want to get. You're going to want to get shader graph, which is you know kind of obvious. Hit install. Uh, it'll download that. It actually takes a couple of minutes. My internet connection is pretty bad, but I've dramatically sped that up for you for this video. The other package you're going to want to get is this one here called the Render Pipelines Lightweight. And so this is what's actually going to render our shader once we have it installed. We then want to go ahead and create a from the create rendering a lightweight render pipeline we don't actually need to do anything we just need to create it and go into our graphic settings and drag that pipeline in this is just a boilerplate step you'll only need to do once to use shader graph um, you can change settings on that pipeline if you want but we're just going to ignore all of them Then we're going to go ahead and create our shader. These three here are all the different types of graph we want. In this case, we're going to go with an unlit graph. Now, PBR is really useful if you're going with 3D, um, but for a 2D, unlit graph is probably what you want. We'll give that a name, and then we'll double click to edit it. So there's some important parts to look at at the shader graph scene. The master node is what basically where all of our outputs go to. On that settings there, we're just going to change it to transparent, which you'll almost always want when you're doing uh, sprite renderers. We can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. 
Um, and you can also move things around and navigate. It's a fairly standard Unity setup. On the left hand side here, we have the properties window. Um, so you can, these are all of the public variables that are exposed to set in the inspector or via code. So we can go ahead and give them, you know, create textures and create colors for whatever we want. Um, again, we're going to give them useful names. This expose button determines whether it shows in the inspector or not. This reference is actually what it's referred to programmatically. Um, oddly enough, the human readable name and the programming name are quite different. We're actually going to call that main text. In most cases, the name you call it won't matter, but for the sprite renderer it will. And then we can set a default for it, which is really useful uh, so that we can see what's happening. We drag the property out, and you can see it automatically creates a node for us based on that property. We can also hit spacebar to create nodes. Now the first node we're going to want is a sample texture 2D. Uh, and then we can just click and drag from the texture to the texture property of the sample texture 2D. And you can see what texture that's gone and created for us. And we can actually drag the output of that straight into our master node. Like so. And you'll see there we've gone ahead and made a shader. If we went into Unity now, that'll work. If we drag the alpha across, that will take transparency um, and we have a working shader. It's not very sophisticated at the moment, but it does work. If we go back to Unity, we can create a new material that will use that shader. We'll give it a, give it a useful name. We'll call that Blue Crab. And then we had use this drop down menu at the top here to choose our particular shader graph. And you can see there's that material there. It's got our default sprite that we put in already. We can go click our crab in the scene and we can drag our material across to the sprite renderer. Uh, there is a little error that comes up there. You can ignore that. It's just a warning. Now we hit play and we can see our crab is successfully rendering. At this stage it doesn't look any different from the regular sprite renderer because we haven't actually done much aside from sample the texture and run it. Well, let's go back into our shader again. And let's start doing something fancy. The first node I'm going to create is a multiply node. I can hit the space bar which brings up the node menu and just type in multiply. What I'm going to do is multiply the RBG values by the alpha. Uh, strictly speaking we don't need to do this but it will actually make it more human readable. It will make it easier for us to see what's happening. A lot of editing programs for sprites uh, actually leave a lot of junk in areas that are transparent uh, but in our case because we're looking at those areas a lot in the shader we actually want to zero those areas out and that will that will mean it's easy for us to see what we're doing it's much easier to interpret those four crabs in the middle than the mess that we had on the left hand side Do some rearranging. Uh, one thing you do do with shader graph is there's a lot of moving around and dragging things around. The next node we're going to use is a split node. We don't really need this, but it'll make it more human readable. Uh, the rest of our work is just going to be done on the green channel because that's the channel we're going to be converting. 
The next node we're going to use is step. Step's pretty cool. It has a in and an edge value. Wherever in is higher than edge, it will return 1. Wherever in is lower than edge, it will return 0. So if we use the right edge values, we can basically cut out individual sections or individual colors. With a high threshold, I can pick out just the eyes. What we're going to do is create a bunch of step nodes at different uh, edge levels, and we can pick out each of the individual colors. So again, we'll take that same value out of the split, and now we'll lower the threshold value slightly. And you can see with a lower threshold value, I've now got the eyes and the outer shell. We'll do the same thing, lowering the edge value again. And now we get the eyes and the shell and that undershell. Then by the time we get to our last step, we're getting all of the colors except the transparent areas. That's not quite exactly what we need. Uh, because you'll see that each of the areas has all of the colors from the previous step. So what we're going to do next is do a little bit of subtraction. And if we just subtract each node from the previous one, then we'll get a node which is just one of those five colors from the original. So again, set the spacebar, type and subtract, or you can go play around with nodes and choose them. And we'll wire that up. One thing that I really love about Shader Graph is that you can see exactly what you're getting as you're going. So you can look there and we can see that. Uh, we can see that layer and we can go, is that what we wanted? Is it what we expected? Um, with the old code based shaders, you basically had to write the whole thing and then click play and hope you didn't have any errors and stuff. This is just so much easier. It's also neat, once you're done with a node, you can click this little thing, little button, and shrink it down so that you don't need it anymore. So we have all of our colors isolated. However, they are currently just pure white, which is not particularly useful to us. So the next thing we've got to do is go ahead and color them. Shaders are kind of cool in that their math is all in the 0 to 1 region, which means that we can do some cool things. So if you multiply any numbers in the 0 to 1 region, you stay in the 0 to 1 region. So we're going to use multiplication to add those colors in. But first, we'll go ahead and make some properties for the color. So our eyes will be pretty white. We'll make another color. What did we say this was going to be? We said it was going to be blue. So we'll just go ahead and make it blue. And we'll make this a dark blue. Somewhere about there. not too worried about the names or the references for these because I don't intend to change it by code. But if you did want to change it by code, you could give them proper references or proper names for the inspector. Also, I highly recommend letting your artists actually pick the colors. Um, they can do this via the inspector. These default colors we're giving it are just ones so that we can see the difference when we're programming.
there we go now we have our five colors we can go ahead hit spacebar create a multiply node and we're going to drag each of those sections we just created across and drag in our color and multiply it you can't actually see it on the eyes so we'll go ahead and do it on something where the color will actually make a difference and there you have it we have a colored shell and we do the same thing with each of the other colors uh, you can use Control D to duplicate a node. It's kind of a handy trick if you've already got the node you want. Um, because there is a lot in shaders, there is a lot of sort of repeated patterns. It's interesting as I go through this, the reason we actually develop this shader was because we were sitting we were sitting up at about 1 a.m. at night in the game jam and we had this green crab and we had about 30 different animations for it and our producer came to us and said you know what I really think we should make uh, a pink crab and my artist kind of looked at me and she said yes yeah, Sunid she said I got 30 animations it's gonna take me forever and she's like I just know that as soon as I've done the print crab, she's going to ask for a blue crab and an orange crab and a yellow crab, and she's going to want all these crab colors. And it's, this was about one o'clock in the morning. I said, "Look, let's see what we can do with a shader," and that's why we made this. So now that we've got all of those colors, the last step is simply to add them together. Uh, you guessed it. There is an add node. And we can feed the results of the first add node into the second add node and so on and so on and which sort of creates a cascade so each add node adds another set of colors to it and this way so in the first in the first nodes with the step we deconstructed our image and now with add we're putting all of the colors back on the same layer Right, and there you see it, folks. We have just converted our green coat crab to a blue crab entirely through shaders. The last thing to do is throw that node into the master node. Then we save it. Go back to Unity. And you'll find our crab has miraculously turned blue. There we go. We have a blue crab, and that is as simple as that. All the animations work. Everything works with the same set of sprites. Now, when that producer came to us and said, you know what, I want different colors crabs, all the artist has to do is create a new material. Um, we can literally duplicate the last one. Uh, we'll call it pink crab we'll make a yellow crab why not let's duplicate it again drag our new material in So each crab now has a different material. Should probably drag those crabs apart so you can see them. And then we can just go into each crab and adjust its material. So we'll leave blue crab as he is. Grab this one, he's supposed to be red crab. Uh, we'll just I'm just gonna make it red. Like I said, if you've got a if you've got an artist working with you, you probably want to make this a little more uh, sophisticated than just randomly clicking on the color wheel. But I'm here to teach you how to program, not how to make an art make art. 
and we'll do the same thing with yellow crab just sort of play around with the colors till it looks about right And there you have it folks, one set of pixel art and we can get to four different colored crabs or really as many different colored crabs as you want. The other great thing about this is it takes the, the, the artist no longer needs to redraw every animation um, if you need subtle changes in the, in the colors of the artwork or if your palette changes or whatever, you can just work with the same animations and and tweak the colors via the materials um, which is a great a great bonus yeah so let's say you know someone comes along and says you know what we want that pink crab to have blue eyes boom it's done no need to go back to the artwork no need to redo animations we're sorted let's hit the play button here prove my words and you can see all of those crabs animating perfectly even though they're all the same color they all appear as different colors on our screen um, thanks for watching i've been kawazi games if you like this tutorial, you know, hit the like button, let me know in the comments, um, share with me what else you want to see. Uh, be sure to check out Sunid's portfolio and the game we made. Both of those links will be in the description below. And subscribe, tell me what you want to see next. Thank you for watching.